In WoW's solar system, there are eight named planets. Azeroth, where World of Warcraft takes place, Draenor, home of the Orcs, Argus, the original homeworld of the Draenei, Zoroth, home to the infernal dreadsteeds that Warlock summon, Ka'aresh, the ethereal homeworld which was devoured and conquered by Dementius, Sandros, a legion destroyed planet players temporarily visit in Warlords of Draenor, Zarath is mentioned in Mist of Pandera as a world that was destroyed as a show of power by the Burning Legion during the enslavement of Zoroth. And there's Fremlin Deskar, another world that was wiped clean of life by the Legion in one of Velen's visions. Someone once did the math to figure out the size of Kalimodor in the Eastern Kingdoms in real life, and it came out to 80 square miles combined, each continent coming out to about 40 square miles each. The island of Manhattan has 20 square miles, making it half the size of a continent in WoW. If I were to take a guess, I'd say Northrend is around two-thirds the size of the continents, and Pandera is about half, making Northrend about 27 square miles and Pandera about 20 square miles, for a total of 127 square miles of landmass. The Isle of Wight, a small island in the channel between the UK and European continent, is 146 square miles, and thus bigger than World of Warcraft. Azeroth is a pretty small place. It should be noted that the planet is supposed to be a lot larger in lore. With the launch of Rift, there was an ad campaign stating we're not in Azeroth anymore. That's kind of a challenge to WoW and its hopeful attempt to overthrow WoW and be the new big MMO on the market. Well, that didn't happen, and WoW is still number one by a huge margin. Although, Rift is still doing pretty well in its free-to-play model. WoW has many different political structures on both Horde and Alliance side. Night Elves are a theocracy, where the High Priestess and the Sisterhood hold supreme political power. There was some competition with the Druids, but after a series of scandals, it's pretty obvious the Sisterhood of Elune hold ultimate power. Humans and Worgens are feudal monarchies with aristocratic councils and local elected councils. Dwarves are a traditionalistic monarchy. The Horde are mostly led by chieftains, ruled by Warchief Vol'jin. What makes the Warchief the leader is his power, and the fact that people choose to follow him. There aren't any written rules. The Blood Elves seem to be part monarchy, at least. Being led by a regent right now, they await a true leader. Gnomes are a technocratic republic, meaning that they elect their leaders based mostly on the skills they show in a respective field. Engineering, mostly. Draenei, theocracy with local oligarchic councils. 10,000 years ago, when Queen Azara was the ruler of the Night Elves, there was an elite magic-using sect known as the Highborn, who dabbled in magics that many other elves considered heretical by drawing upon the power of the Well of Eternity. At the order of Queen Azara, they opened a series of portals triggering the War of the Ancients. Sometime after the Great Sundering, most of the surviving Highborn were exiled from Kalimador and settled in the Eastern Continent, founding the Kingdom of Quel'Thalas. They became known as High Elf. Their purple skin eventually faded to a pale peach color, like that of some human indoors. 90% of the High Elves died when Arthas corrupted the Sunwell in his siege on Quel'Thalas. Of the 10% who survived, 90% decided to call themselves Blood Elves, in memory of the ridiculous amount of casualties from the Third War. And those are the same Blood Elves that are now part of the Horde. There are quite a few NPCs dedicated to deceased players. One that really sticks out for me is Ahab Wheathoof, as he is in the Torrent starting area, and that's where I made my first tune. At the time, I thought he sounded way different than all the other NPCs, and it's because he was voiced by Ezra Chatterton, a young player with cancer who got to spend a day at Blizzard headquarters thanks to a Make-A-Wish Foundation. He got to create Ahab Wheathoof, voice Ahab, and create the quest Kyle's Gone Missing to go with him, among other things. He passed away in October 2008 when his tumor which had been in remission came back. Azeroth has two moons, the larger White Lady, Elune to the Night Elves and Masha to the Torrens, and the smaller Blue Child. If you've played between Burning Crusade and Cataclysm, and didn't read outside game sources, you wouldn't have known that Blue Child even existed. It disappeared for years in BC for graphical errors, and only recently returned in Mists. Every several hundred years, the Blue Child passes over the White Lady in a rare event called the Embrace. What this means in astronomical terms is that the Blue Child must be, in reality, freakishly small and close to Azeroth, with the White Lady must be even more freakishly huge and farther away perhaps bigger than Azeroth for this to be possible. This is going with the assumption that the orbits of the two planetary objects are stable, and their distance to Azeroth doesn't fluctuate dramatically. There are seven major religions in WoW, as well as a few other smaller ones. The Church of the Holy Light is a religion devoted to worshipping the light. No one really knows where the church gets its powers from, but one who denies that it is real has either never seen a priest heal or a paladin cleanse. 
the worship of Elune. Elune is one of the few deities that is actually known to exist in the world. She is the most powerful Eternal in Azeroth, and her symbol is that of the Crescent Moon. Mystery of the Makers is a Dwarven religion which focuses on where they came from, why they are here, and what they are supposed to be doing. Followers of the Old Gods Followers of the Old Gods are mostly comprised of Naka, Elementals, Quajari, and Nerubians. Although, a few mortals have heard the whisperings of the Old Gods and gone mad because of it, including Deathwing and Queen Azara. Loa Worship The Religion of the Trolls The Trolls draw power from their voodoo magics by invoking the Loa. The Earth Mother the god of the Torin. She is the creator of life and everything. The sun, Anshi, and the white lady moon, Musha, are her eyes. Cult of the Forgotten Shadows. The Cult of the Forgotten Shadows is the religion of the Forsaken, and is the corrupted form of the Church of the Holy Light. The time travel in Warlords of Draenor's expansion can be explained by two time traveling theories. Alternate Timeline Theory. The timeline we go to is just a branch off of our current timeline, where everything is exactly the same as our timeline except for a few minor changes. What this means is that the timeline we go to will have a new alternate path, and our timeline will continue on the same path because we didn't go back on our timeline, but a different, similar one. There's also the Multiverse Theory, where we simply teleport to another dimension that is similar to ours, but taking place at a different point in time. The line the arrow points to started after our timeline, so crossing into it will put us in their present, which is about 30 years in our past. The other three lines of the timeline take place in the future, so if we went to one of those timelines, we would technically be going into the future. WoW seems to be in the technological stage of the early 1900s, as Henry Ford mass-produced the Model T in 1908, and World of Warcraft has an abundance of functioning vehicles, although other inventions might point at an even further along point of progression. If we take the Turbo Flying Machine into account, that puts them up to 1937 when the first jet engine was invented. Although we can go even further, in 1960 the laser was invented by Theodore Harold Maimen, and you can see laser beams being used by Siegecrafter Black Fuse in the Siege of Orgrimmar. If you take the Rocket Man into account, you can put the Age of Technological Advance to 1969 when the US put the first person on the moon. Or even further, since they have technologies that we don't even have in the form of dimensional portals and shrink rays. All I'm saying is that World of Warcraft should be able to easily start using fighter planes and atomic bombs with their level of technology.